Before we get started, go ahead and enjoy this new song from Jakari, Playboy, mixed, engineered by Photo Knox of HBG Services by Guy. This song is crazy. About to play the snippet of my favorite part of the song. Maybe a little biased, <laughs> but it's fire. Enjoy. So when I finally put my foot forward, let's keep with the facts. Six, seven, big, step and move my figure in packs. Change my view to clouds and mountains. Once was living in shacks. Now my back like my color of pack. Look like a shadow, got some guns for a back. That's my brothers all covered in black. Brand brothers, HBG on the map. Well, welcome to Woke with KD. Thank you guys for tuning in this morning. I'm actually up. I said I was going to start a podcast where I get on the podcast early in the morning and kind of talk my talk. And then a motherfucker couldn't wake up. So I just kept going back to sleep and waking up around like 12 and shit. <laughs> Can't be woke and wake up. I mean, I guess it could be at any time you wake up. That's kind of cool, but no. Try to start it off right in the morning, right when I go on IG, you know, check the emails, use the bathroom, all that fly G shit. So, essentially, man, I feel like a, a, a animal in a cage, you know, but I don't know how to, like, properly release my message. So, that's why we have a podcast, because I just want to come on here and rant. There's no specific point to this podcast, but... For me to come over here and talk my get and smoke on that top secret project 4516. Y'all, the best fucking thing smoking on the goddamn earth. What does it mean when this when the flavor goes to the store and it sell out immediately? I mean, it's popping, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. 4516, shout out to my guys, Grandy Flora, Oak Fruitland, John, your daily tote. Mm. Motherfuckers is lit. So, today was interesting. I woke up feeling good. That was great. I feel like whenever I'm waking up on a great start to my day, Instagram knows how to put some shit in my feed that just throws me off for a loop, right? That's why I kind of give a little bit before I check my phone because I'm not trying to just start off the day pissed off. But... I got caught lacking today, of course, and I checked my phone, and there's the video, which I've been avoiding, which is that one white dude telling that black kid to get out the neighborhood. Fucking trash, all right? Pretty point blank period, point blank period, it's trash, okay? Type of behavior, I, d I just don't understand it, but whatever, you know what I mean? I just know <laughs> that there's eventually, there's a, a shift in the pendulum, you know? Um, a motherfucker that's racist, I don't think it's as easy as it was before to raise kids that take your same belief. So, like, if a motherfucker, you know, super racist, whatever, he's like, you know, we don't fuck with those type of people, right? Whatever it may be. I don't think if your daughter or your son's on social media, TikTok, Instagram, anything, even... Even on the goddamn Minecraft, playing video games, watching streams on YouTube, it's impossible to kind of create like racism based off of old thoughts, right? Like if someone's like if a new kid's racist today, I think it would be more based off of experience as opposed to actual programming. So, and of course, like you know, I'm. Just, you can't have a role with no racist, but I believe we could reduce the percentage of that, like, feeling inside people, right? And Because I personally think it's programming. At the end of the day, we're a human race. If an alien shows up today or some shit from out of this world, we're going to have to band together. Simple. If the aliens came down and wanted to do some Dragon Ball Z fucking uh, <laughs> best fighters of the earth, your guys versus high guys or some shit like that. I don't think we're just choosing only white people, black people, or Asian people just to go. I think it's going to be who is the best, who is the most fit human, who could put hands on these alien motherfuckers. You know, I don't think racism matters to, like, that real extent. So, my point is, 
The kids of the future, I thank you because I already know you're going to be a lot more accepting and uh, I would say passionate about the overall human race than most uh, previous generations, right? Because I know for me, I'm a shift in like a big, you know, uh, like my age, whatever generation, I forget, I think Z, whatever it is, the people, let's say two, ger two generations behind me, they have a certain mindset, but that mindset is off of programming, respectfully. It's not like, like I realized at a young age, uh, some of this doesn't feel right. <laughs> some of it just don't feel right. Something's wrong here. I don't know what it is, but I don't think that this is how humans, dang, I don't think this is how humans are supposed to be getting, uh, living, you know? Um, hold on. I got to text Don about the Matrix talk. See if he'll get on here real quick, because Don is, he's the guy. He's the guy. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to be as prevalent in the future. I don't think my kids are going to have to deal with it as much. Now, there may be different levels of racism going forward that's, like, way beyond race. Like, you know, technology is advancing, so then racism may be like, oh, you don't have iOS 2. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, it may be some weird shit. I'm not getting the software update as a human. FYI, I refuse. I am going to stay human point, <laughs> human 0.0 or whatever it would be. I'm, I'm that. I'm not trying to become a cyborg. No, thank you. <laughs> you fucking say you become a cyborg. I'm watching some shit right now called Westworld, thanks to Jakari and Coco, and it got me kind of effed up in the head. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you guys made an amusement park. First, I, I turned it off in the first five minutes because I thought it was a Western. And I'm like, bro, I'm not about to sit here and watch no goddamn Western. I hate Westerns because I know the era. I know if a black guy popped up in there at some point, like, how'd you get here? You know what I mean? So I never really liked Westerns. Fun fact. <laughs> so I'm like, nah, I'm good, on, I'm good off this shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool off this shit. But then, you know, start watching a little bit longer into Westworld. And anyone that's watched Westworld, you know exactly what type of shit I'm talking about. Is some, <laughs> They... Westworld's actually a few years ahead of us. <laughs> it is not a Western at all. It is a simulation. I was like, ah. Uh, what if my dreams are downloads from the little people, you know? What if we're in the United States simulation, you know? I would actually believe... That we're in a Sacramento simulation. I feel like people born in Sacramento are great people. Because I've seen literally so many people from Sac go on and do great things. And it almost makes me think, are we the only ones on Earth? <laughs> like, honestly, is the whole Earth watching us? I've always felt that. I've always felt that. I don't know why, but I feel it. You know, gut instinct type shit. Like something special with us out here. So what is that? What's going on? You know? I don't know. Shit. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, that's kind of some of my, in my head there on some, what they would call conspiracy stuff. Because I'm just always trying to figure something out. And then sometimes you got to take a break. You got to be like, you know what? I'm about to just live in a loop for a little bit and go to work because I don't know what. I just found out some crazy shit. <laughs> You know, you find out some stuff, you just got to sit down like, whoa, Lord Jesus. And it all add up. Sometimes not everything's coincidence. So, hey, first off, this is not a conspiracy podcast. But I've been, I watched Westworld last night for the first time, blew my mind. I come on here and I see this on the Instagram, the dude. I don't know. That's how I'm feeling this morning. But essentially, I feel good because I know that I'm in control of this matrix, you know. It's all, it's all here for us to just create, do what we need to do. Key thing is that you do it. <laughs> Gotta fucking do it. 
Man, I've been sitting here. I'm doing some sales this morning. Yesterday, I did a whole bunch of cold, cold calls. We called like over 100 stores in Maine, uh, Michigan, and uh, Massachusetts, like a whole bunch of East Coast places. And it was fun. I got to talk to a whole bunch of people on the East Coast. I don't know. They were, they had good conversation. It was uh, it was enjoyable. I liked it. You know what I mean? Um, but working on getting cocoa nugs everywhere on Earth, so you know how that goes. It's a daily job. You got to stay on it. You know what I mean? There's so many stores already up. New stores coming out. New brands, dispensaries, smoke shops, hookah shops, all that shit. So, hey. I'm going to sit here and I'll be calling you. Introduce. Well, how are you? How the hell are you? <laughs> Man. So this podcast is pretty cool. My thoughts are very, uh, I always felt like my thoughts are scattered. You know, they kind of just go everywhere. Think about a lot of random shit throughout the day. So why not just record myself? I sit here most of my day, work on the computer and make plays. Try to make plays. I make plays. <laughs> and I am, uh, I want to hear you know, I want to come back a year from now. Like, Joe Budden has, whatever, 400, 300 episodes. He could go listen to himself and hear his thoughts clearly from years ago. And then people years from now could go back and hear Joe Budden's thoughts from the 2000s. Like, what? Sign me up. I need in on the podcasting, period. It's kind of endless. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and give it a run. Oh, we got a nice little sale coming in through. He wants some jars, some pound bags, some baggies of the cocoa. And just so you guys know, because I found out, <laughs> had no clue, but there are people that actually still have no clue that it's chocolate. And if you were wondering, yes, it is chocolate. And just because we designed the bag for the 4516 does not mean that cocoa nuts has changed. It's still chocolate. I don't sell weed. <laughs> I do not sell weed. It's chocolate, people. It literally is made in the shape of weed. It's it's Rice Krispies with chocolate around it. You know? Nothing more to it. And trust me, I, w I can't lie to you. I can't be like, yo, no, it's not weed and actually walk away and give you weed. You know what I mean? Like, I can't give you weed and be like, no, it's not weed. And then walk away. I'm pretty sure if you get high and you get sick, someone's going to jail. So, it's actually chocolate. And there is no point where I'll be like, oh, nope, it's not. No, it's chocolate. I promise you. And it's some of the best chocolate you'll find out there. You go on CocoaNuts.com, you, you may get lost. You know? You start seeing all them flavors motherfuckers got available. You're like, mmm. I need all of it, all 12, 13, 14 of them, you know? Now, me, I put myself on a cocoa restriction. Can't get high off your own supply. In my beginning days of this, bro, I was sitting there. Every conversation, I just go everywhere because I didn't know how to, like, really promote cocoa nuggets just yet. So I'm like, you know what? Let me just bring it everywhere I go and eat it. <laughs> Pull up to a club pull out the jar right in the middle just start eating it I was like wait what's happening <laughs> yo when I first started it and I was filming all those events for like let's say Echo and uh, every I mean my everybody we were filming everything in LA we were filming though I would go to events with the cocoa nugs and just casually sit down somewhere pull them out and eat them <laughs> Motherfuckers walk by, they be, you know, the motherfucker be side eyeing you, shit. Uh, ooh, um, what is he doing? He's just taking it to the neck, huh? <laughs> oh my gosh, the greatest joy I get is pranking people with coconuts, though, still. I try to let my followers know so that they can be aware and in the loop and enjoy it as much as I do. 
But <laughs> at one point, I became addicted to breaking people. It's like, yo, everybody thinks this weed. That's one thing. There's no question anymore. Everyone thinks that this right here is marijuana, and I could fuck with people. That was the greatest thing ever. It was fun. It was fun. So, yeah, man. Coconut eggs is just chocolate, but it's some of the best fucking chocolate that there is. Now, what time is it? 8.30? Sitting here, toki toki on me, blunty blunty, and um, trying to get it going. I need to get this, uh, need to get this uh, flyer done. Mm. Sorry, guys, I'll be sending text messages. Oh, also, this show is called Woke with KD, but I will be actively working during the show. So. I may get a phone call. I may have to call somebody. I may have to send a text message. I may have to send an email. I'm sitting here at my computer looking for a play. That's how I start off my days. Because um, you got to get to it. At what point? Why would we sit here and wait for them to be like, here's the opportunity you've been looking for yeah I've been looking for it I know I spent my whole life looking for this motherfucker putting the work in behind it too but I'm not gonna wait till it's given I'm going to take it there's a there's a whole different mindset there if you wait for it to be given it may not ever be given and it may be given too late so you have to go get it you know Literally. What do you want? I want this. All right, cool. What are the steps? Bam. Dope. Go do it. That's where my, that's where the problem tends to be. Most people get overwhelmed by the idea of doing it. Like, whoa, I wouldn't even know where to begin. And all you got to do is just go do it. Number one, it takes a little bit of research, you know. But you can't be so exhausted by, like, whatever else you're doing to where you won't put in the work to, you know, go in that direction. That's That's, like... You want to go in this direction. You know you're doing this, to, you know, to do what you got to do. But there's small things like every day, one task a day towards your dream. I think if you spend a whole year doing one task a day, that's 365 things you got done towards your dream. As opposed to the usual one and a half. And I've been there. Because there's so much shit going on in the world. It was actually, the world's at its highest programming now. So it's easy to be like, um, I could just sit here and be on Instagram and, every, and YouTube all day because there's a lot of shit. But you don't want to be on the other side just watching, you know? You want to be in the field affecting. That's just a key point. Like, I want to affect where this goes. I want to put my fucking grips on it, you know? I don't want to just live in a loop. I'm tired of the loop. I'm fucking tired of the goddamn loop. Like they just put you in it and you just go in it and you just buck your fucking head. No. I'm not doing it. And motherfuckers I love ain't doing it either too. Hell no. I hope that anyone that follows me, they at least pick up something along those lines. Well, if this fucker did it, I could go do something. And I haven't done shit. But I'm doing something. And that's the key point is like, just go do it. Fight the loop, man. Shit. I get so frustrated by it because sometimes I'm full on working and I find myself going back to the loop to retreat. Because this work is so unpredictable. You don't know where it could go. It's stressful. It's fucking, you know what I mean? It's nerve-wracking. You're literally creating something that doesn't exist. You know what I mean? It's Or forging something. It's like, it's like you literally have to do it. And it's frustrating as shit. But it's so rewarding. And it feels good. It feels good. It gives me adrenaline rush. Yes, I feel the fucking, the power. Yes. But damn that loot. 
damn it. Out of high school, I almost went to the Marines. No. <laughs> almost. Then reality came in. And then I was like, all right, fuck it. I'll just go to the Air Force. And then guess what? Get what happened? I failed a drug test. Thank you, Lord, for the cannabis industry. Save me from going. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Um, yeah, I I failed. Air Force, he's like, hey, um, yeah. You got a lot of weed in your system, buddy. <laughs> Um, we're not going to put you on the ban list from all branches, but you just can't come to the Air Force, buddy. I'm sorry. And I was like, oh, okay, no problem. Cool. I can go tell my family this and be like, I tried. Thank you. <laughs> I'd rather figure it out. I'd rather figure it out. You know what I mean? But the craziest thing was for me, this is how my shift happened, is that I literally, I was, mind you, I'm a fan of the culture of everything that happens. But I didn't learn until like after high school age, maybe this is really when it started, I have no clue. But it's like age 20, 19, I learned about like Breakfast Club and Hot 97, right? And I start hearing artists' stories. Like, you know, you hear an artist on a record and you really think that's the life they live. Or, yeah, whatever. Whatever. They live life. That doesn't matter. But you hear them and you think that that's just their energy 24-7. Then you see them on an interview and they start telling you all types of behind the scenes. Like, whoa, wait, what? What? They give you stories that you got to reference. And me as a fan... Now I don't really do it. I mean, of course, I still watch major interviews, like ones that are freaking, you know, where there's like, it's so not, you know, I want to know. But I used to watch those and I'm like, wait a minute. So what's behind these cameras? Like, this is different. This is not what I thought the entertainment industry was. I thought, okay, I didn't even know, like on the radio, like BT, you know, if I could do an interview on whatever show, 106 of Park, they don't get in telling you like in-depth stuff. And it's not like, I, I don't know. Breakfast Club, all these different shows blew my mind because, like, you would be, like, your favorite person sitting down talking for an hour. A whole hour straight. Stories. Updates. Everything. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Then you start hearing, yeah, my, my management team. Then they start, you know, you start watching a while. Then you start knowing, wait, oh, they have the same manager. They just mentioned the same dude or those dudes. What a, like, I started learning so much stuff. I'm like, wait a minute. There was a whole behind the scenes of the industry. There's a... That, you don't just have to be like, it's not just be a star and that's it. Because I was like, yeah, I can't be a star. I don't, you know, I'm not finna be an actor, a rapper, hooper, none of it. So I kind of checked out. I'm not going to lie. When I realized that, and damn, I just had the, I just had this realization on this podcast. I literally tried basketball, tried football, did not work. And I was like, damn, sports is what I spent half my life thinking I was going to do, and I can't do it. All right. And then I started um, I started throwing events in at Cordova, or not in Cordova, in Sacramento, but when I was at Cordova, and I learned that, you know, you could throw events and stuff. So I'm thinking, all right, cool, I'll fucking – sit here and throw artist shows and uh, and events but it was more so my whole focus was how do i get people out right so okay we got this venue 250 how can i get 350 in here that's it and then artists i knew they were there they existed but i just thought it was like that's it it's like artists only go perform shows and then they like go do radio interviews and go to the studio right but then like you bring the artist to the show, then you see them backstage. And you're like, oh, oh, you guys are dope. You guys are human. Uh, got it. Broke the whole shell for me. Like, oh, you guys are human. I could talk to you. There's not seven bodyguards around you with fucking the things in the air. You're just a wreck. Got it. Okay, sign me up. What's up, bro? And bam. You know what I mean? But then...
I sat there and I was like, I got to San Diego and I couldn't throw parties the way I thought. And I had no other clue of what I could do. I was like, okay, well, all you think I can do, I've only seen, like, I've thrown events. So I know I could be a security guard or I could, you know, work for a venue or I could, like, I don't know, become a promoter again. Right? So I kind of canceled out everything. I got turned down from the Marines, or not Marines, the uh, Air Force, and I <laughs> definitely wasn't fucking with the Marines. Couldn't do it. So then I'm like, I moved to San Diego. I started working at a call center, and I started working at Apple. Now, the transition was crazy. So I was at the call center. That's when I started watching Breakfast Club and stuff like that. I kind of started waking up. I'm like, wait a minute. There's there's other roles in the industry. Like, these infrastructures have buildings because Charlemagne just said that there's, uh, like, 50 shows going on in the same building. So I'm like, oh, this isn't the Breakfast Club radio tower. It's it's the Power 106 building. And then in there is a whole bunch of different radio shows. But that means all those people are in one room. And there's people that got to run and manage this shit. So I was like, oh, Sony must have an infrastructure like that. Uh, um, Marvel, all these people have teams. They have people working behind that are not on the camera that actually bring it to life. Like there's there's roles, there's jobs. I could work at Marvel and then I could take the skills of what I did there and go work for another thing in the same entertainment. You know what I mean? It's like, got it. I had no clue. I literally had no clue. That did not register to me at all. I'm not from LA. I'm not, you know, uncle wasn't from the from the entertainment, I don't have none of that. I had no one to give me anything when it comes to entertainment, uh, stuff like that, I had no clue. So, then, watching all these interviews, learning a lot about my artists and start doing the research. That's why I got heavy on YouTube, research and shit. Old interviews, and I started seeing like the, uh, blah, 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 speaks on how to, how he, how to actually uh, b- build this or how to start there, like well, whatever. I'm like, whoa, damn, learning jewels. Then I learned what jewels were. That people that have made it sometimes will drop a, a nugget, um, a jewel for you, a jewel that you could take and apply to your life and go do something with it. Um, essentially, when when you get to the top floor in the elevator, right, you press the you press before you walk out, you press one and you walk out the elevator so the elevator can go back down to floor number one and bring the next person up. Simple. That's what the whole concept of jewels are. Right. Shout out to Dwayne Martin for that last uh, uh, metaphor because that was his. Uh, he's a goat. So. Then I start working at Apple, just in the, you know, the, one of the stores in San Diego, right? But it completely changed my life. So my, I was in a call center. I was in a call center. I was doing retention for a phone company, and it was a phone company for older people. So I began cussed out about a 12 cent bill, bill increase, all types of crazy shit, just the wildest of phone calls. Um, so I wasn't really exposed as much, just people complaining. I was all right. Then I get to Apple and I start, you know, doing a little sales there, you know, and the whole point of Apple, when you're selling to people, you have to be very personal as opposed to like, you have to be really, you know, talk to them, see what the, what do you have going? What type of business do you have? You know, like you have to ask them some very personal questions that I just never thought to ask anybody. <laughs> and then I start asking them questions and he, you're talking to someone, you're like, yeah, I just flew in from Italy. Um, me and my company, we just set up a blah, blah, blah here. I'm like, wait, nigga, what did you just say to me? I've never heard any. Was that English? And is that possible? Like, literally, I was getting situations I just couldn't believe. I'm like, wait a minute, what? Whoa. There's a different, there's different levels. And so Apple exposed me to people from different countries, people from different states, people from different uh, backgrounds, people with different goals, people with different everything. And I'm like, at one point, I would go to work just to ask people, yo, what are you, what are you using this iPad for? 
I said, so okay, cool. What are you using it for? And they'd be like, oh, well, you know, me and my uh, me and my wife, we just started a little company. And oh, wow, what's the company? Okay, cool. How'd you start it? Next thing you know, I'm asking them 20 questions before we even got <laughs> before I even ring out the people to bring out the the technology. I'm sitting there just talking to them, and they're talking to me. We sitting there conversating. You know, it's like. I never was exposed to it. I didn't even know things existed. So then that's why I was like, all right, you know, let me go ahead and try my foot in this because there's more than, you know, there's a lot. There's a lot out there that I don't know, right? And then the, the craziest thing to me was that all the shows I were watching or interviews, they were all based on the East Coast. So I'm like, already alone, that shit is 800,000, whatever, how many miles it is away from us. That bitch is far. It is not in California. So I need to do whatever I can here to make it to there. So I thought New York was the goal. And then, um, then of course, you know, start learning, oh, L.A., that's what Hollywood is. And I put them, I put them there. Oh, Hollywood, celebrities, entertainment, all this shit exists together. Holy fuck. I have no clue. Uh-uh. I had no clue. Management teams, marketing teams, branding teams, management teams, uh, uh, venue owners, fucking studio owner. Like I had no clue. Influence, no clue. I missed out. I thought I did. That's why I worked so hard in the beginning. I still work hell hard now, <laughs> but like in the beginning, with no direction, no like real. Let me just come out here and figure it out. Yeah, I went crazy because I was trying to hurry up and figure it all out. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like now that I've done my little R and D research and development, now I'm ready to build. I.e., Brand Brothers USA. You know, but it's like you got to figure it out. You have to can't blame someone for not becoming something I didn't even know was. Not possible, but even existed. You know? Sometimes it's beyond, oh, is it possible? Like, no, I didn't even know it existed. I'm not worried about being possible or impossible. But the fact that it exists, oh, yeah, I'm going for it. Some motherfuckers just need to know something exists. They need to see it tangibly, uh, tangibly whatever, however you say that word. They need to see it. It needs to be somewhere in their hand. They need someone to tell them something that, like, you have to see it. It's just like, uh, we're just, you know, dogs, kids. You got to teach them some shit. We never stop learning. If you think just because, oh, I graduate high school, I'm done learning, or I'm, uh, I'm in college, so I'm learning this. So I don't have to learn anything. Like, no. You have to learn every single day. Period. The fuck? Mm. Yeah, so. I don't know. It's my download. I don't know what. We covered a lot today. Uh, And it felt good. This is therapy. This is. This is. I come in here and think about this shit. I just don't speak on it. And sometimes you got to speak so you can connect your thoughts and then you finally come to damn conclusions. You know? You have to. We answer, we ask so many questions on a daily basis and only get the answers to a small percentage of them. But we're asking away, you know? So if you could spend time answering these questions... Or spend the time, you know, putting things together, it'll feel better. Just there, that's what therapeutic is, is really, I'm starting to figure out, it's just coming to those actual, not conclude like understandings, you know? It's like when you finally come to some shit that you've been thinking about, you finally understand it. Like going into a job that no one trains you for, as opposed to going to a job that you've been trained for. And, you know, it's just different. So... Yeah, I don't know. I'm excited for this podcast. I appreciate you guys for tuning in, especially if you made it this end, uh, this far to the end. Thank you. You're a real one. You're the GOAT. And uh, I appreciate you. 
and I'm super excited for where this is going to go. Um, follow me on all social media, J-U-S-T-K-X-D-D-I-N-G, and then follow the number one company on earth, Brand Brothers USA. Um, I'm about to go and get these cold calls and go change the world. Thank you, and I appreciate you guys. Have a good one.